Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at the first book in the Safekeeper trilogy by Sharon Shin. This is the Safekeeper's Secret. Uh, these three books are loosely connected. They're in the same world. They happen in sequence, but you could probably read them standalone. Um, though this first book really does set up the world. So what you need to understand about this world, kind of the basis is you have safekeepers who just by their own nature, normally something that comes to them when they're late teens, early, uh, early twenties, they are one very, e they lie very easily, but they do not tell secrets. So people can basically people's secrets are safe with them. So people will come to them to basically tell them secrets and they will never reveal it. Then you have truth tellers who are the exact opposite. People will come to them uh, to tell them truths and they will repeat it for them or they will ask them questions wanting the real honest truth and it will be revealed. They can detect lies essentially. So they can tell if people are lying or not. So that's something else that they can do. And then you have a very special person. And this is only one person. The truth tellers and the secret keepers, there are several of them. You have the dream maker. Now this person is typically female and who has suffered greatly in her life. And she, basically people who come around her tell them their dreams and the magic allows sometimes for them to come true. So people, they usually travel around and people flock to them. And this magic moves from one person to the next. So there will be a person who's this dream maker for a long time. And then eventually the magic moves to somebody else and they have to kind of realize who this is. So in this tale, it starts off where this man holding a baby uh, on horseback, exhausted, comes to this door of a safekeeper. He asks, it's like, are you the safekeeper of this town? She's like, no, it's my sister. She's in labor, about to have a baby here. And you can hear her screaming in the background, calling for her sister. He's like, you'll do, because he's, she's a safekeeper as well. He hands her a baby, tells her something, leaves and proceeds to commit suicide outside of town. So the next morning, the people of the village is like, where did the second child, did she give birth to twins? Like, no, this little girl, this little boy was brought to us last night and they eventually found the body of the person. And he tells her, it's like, who are you? It's like, I'm the safe keeper to the king. Safe keeper to the king. So they raise, so you have these two children. Reed is the little boy that supposedly was dropped off. And Fiona is the little girl that's supposedly the safe keeper's daughter. And you see them grow up. She assumes that she's going to become the next safety keeper. She learns to be a healer as well because obviously they don't get a lot of money being a safe keeper. Reed learns to do a variety of things. He handles horses. He works in the local tavern. He does a few other different things, kind of feeling things out. Eventually their mother gets sick. They're sent away for the summer because both her sister, because that's who they go to stay with, and their neighbor who's a healing woman thinks that quiet over the summer would help her get better. It doesn't. The children kind of get mad because they missed out on time with their mom. They come back. They take care of her. They're roughly about 16 at this point. So they're nearly adults. And she eventually dies. Reed goes off to travel and to kind of figure, find himself. Fiona stays home, uh, takes on a roommate of their neighbor's uh, granddaughter and learns and continues to act almost as a secret keeper as well as a healer. And she's not as good as her mother at keeping secrets. And the truth teller who she doesn't particularly like um, comes by one day because she was told a secret by this mother whose husband was molesting their daughter and she was now pregnant. Now they were gonna give the baby away in the next town. And she told, basically tells this to Fiona. And it's like, it would be better if she not come back. So Fiona, finds another friend of theirs whose wife is very ill and they're looking for somebody to help take care of her and help manage the house. So she ends up telling um, the family where the girl went to give birth to the baby. It's like, send her here so she doesn't go back. And that's essentially what she does. She never comes home, she kind of disappears. So, and the truth teller tells Fiona, it's like, that's not something your mother ever would have done. So. Time passes, the kids get older, their various seasons pass. Finally, Reith, Reed comes home. Um, I can't remember when it is. They're in their 20s by this point. And the king shows up. 
So the, and he says, I've heard rumors that I have a son in this town. And the truth teller is there and he's like, no, you have no son. Um, the, and he says, Reed is not your child. He's the child of the safekeeper. You have a daughter, Fiona. That was the child that was dropped off. And that was, it's kind of shocking. He's not pleased. Now he's been desperately, the king's desperately wanting a son. And a lot of his mistresses who'd given birth to daughters, both the, I believe the mistress and the baby have been killed, mainly just the ch children. So, and he has a legitimate daughter and he just hasn't been able to recognize her. Well, he's chosen not to, cause you know, this is kind of medieval-ish, you know, castles, villages, male dominance kind of thing. <laughs> so, and his daughter, it's like, she's his only heir. And so he goes off. She stays behind briefly. This is the princess and now heir. Um, and says to Fiona, when you have time, come see me in the capital city. I'd like to get to know my sister. So now, now that's almost not quite the end of this tale. So the current dream maker had been by and she let them know that she felt the magic leaving her. And this woman comes to town and she knows that people around her have started having, basically their dreams have come true because that's how the dream, mage, dream maker works in this town. Um, in this um, world here. You only have one dream maker as opposed to secret keepers and truth tellers and the magic passes to them because they've had great tragedy in their life. And this woman comes and it's revealed that she's Fiona's mother and she's had great tragedy. She had to give up her child. She was obviously, she may have been abused by, she'd had a hard life after being a mistress to the king. So she becomes the new dream maker. And that's how this story this story ends. It's a very nice tale. There's it's not dark at all. It's very light. It's very kind of fun. It's very much a coming of age tale with Fiona realizing who she is and you see her brother Reed testing out different things and then eventually settling and being the safekeeper. So, it's a fun book to read. It's not dark. It's very light. There's no evil in it. There's no monsters or anything. It's a very refreshing, nice read. It's definitely teen around 12 to 16 is where kind of it's recommended age range. I as an adult enjoy it because essentially it's not all that dark. There's no real evil here. There's no monsters. There's no villains in this tale or in any of these tales. Well, I suppose the last book will get there. Um, but that's the extent of this book. So if you like what you see, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I'm going to be covering The Truth Teller's Tale and The Dream Maker's Magic, which are the other two books in this series, as well as I've covered a variety of other things. I've covered some unfortunately recent horror. <laughs> that was the last major series I covered, which was The Last, last Apprentice by Joseph Delaney. So you can check that out if you're very into horror. I covered all 13 of those books. Um, I'm covering The Princess Diaries next. That's coming in the new year. Uh, I've covered a variety of things. I've covered some Tamora Pierce and that more of that is coming along with a variety of different children's books. I cover various different films, not stuff that's in theaters. I have a small child. Uh, I don't go to theaters. I barely get out of the house these days. But um, we also cover a lot of educational stuff. So be sure to check out the rest of my channel. Like and subscribe to look forward to more. Thank you.